wonderful to see so many great friends of Gatestone out here. Thank you all. Uh, it's a great, great honor to introduce the extraordinary Stephen Emerson, founder and president of the Investigative Project. There is no one who knows more about terrorism or counterterrorism than he. I'm so thrilled to give you Stephen Emerson. Bravo. Today I was interviewed on a radio show and I was asked about the fact that um, I, I pointed out the fact that four Americans, four Americans, despite three years of negotiations with Iran and despite the fact that the United States had $150 billion of assets and had all this leverage against Iran, the Iranians would not release these four Americans, including an American pastor, an American Marine, and an American journalist. And the radio host said, well, if the Amer United States had insisted on that, maybe Iran wouldn't have signed the deal. And I said, well, that would have been great. The reality is this gr arrangement, this deal with Iran, is the worst negotiation the United States has conducted in history. It is an arrangement that will eviscerate our national security and threaten the very existence of the State of Israel and the allies even in Europe. And ultimately, when, is, when Iran acquires inter-ballistic missiles, it'll threaten two-thirds of the United States. Will American public wake up and will Chuck Schumer, the Democratic Party, and the rest of the American Congress wake up and realize this is a danger to our country and cannot be, wait, cannot be stopped unless they vote to override the presidential veto that is expected to be coming. There is only one answer to this treaty. No, no, no. And if you look at the agreement, the 160 pages, which many people haven't, there are two entities listed. No one has realized what these entities are. They're not related to the Iranian nuclear program. One of them is the Iranian Revolutionary Guards. The other one is the Al-Quds Force. Both entities have been named in U.S. federal indictments, the State Department, and in the Office of Foreign Assets Control as being responsible for the killings of hundreds of Americans and dozens of Israelis over the last 25 years. They have been sued in courts and had, had judgments leveled against them for more than $20 billion. And yet, they are being removed from the sanctions list, and ultimately, they will be removed from having been indicted. So this agreement will actually free known terrorists who have killed Americans, Israelis, Europeans, Westerners, and Muslims. An agreement that doesn't give anything to the United States except the fact that it levels the playing field for Iran to dominate the Middle East, equate itself as a superpower, and ultimately become a, a, a power that has the ability to destroy all of its neighbors in the Middle East. Its terrorist ability through the billions of dollars to Hezbollah, through Islamic Jihad, through Hamas, is only going to be enriched over the next six months to a year to six months. Its ability to uh, acquire weapons due, due to the lifting of the embargo. I, don't, I think people have to realize the nature of how this arrangement has come about. The wholesale appeasement by the Obama administration to the government of Iran, which is the most evil regime in the world today, rivaling that of Nazi Germany, has to be told, and we have to say it loud and clear, we will not forgive and we will not forget. And to every congressman, to every senator, we will be on your tail for every single day till the vote comes for the first vote and the second vote for the next 60 days until you vote to override this deal and kill this arrangement. The president in 2009 when he was running for re-election said three things. He said, one, I will, not I will not allow Iran to get a nuclear bomb. He said, two, all options are on the table 
a diplomatic euphemism for military strike, and three, no deal is better than a bad deal. Well, all three were lies. All three of them he went back on. And since that time, we have a bad deal, Iran gets the bomb, and there's no military capability anymore to deter Iran. So now we have a situation that unless Congress acts, I believe ultimately is going to be left up to a military strike to take out the Iranian capabilities to take out the world. If we don't take out Iran, they will take out us. And if the United States government, which is comprised of you, not Obama, not his Secretary of State, not his administration, not of Congress. It's the American people that decide. And it's up to you to force your representatives, your congressmen, your senators to say no, no, no. Because if you don't, your children will never forgive you, forgive you for not protecting this country from a Holocaust and not protecting the state of Israel from a Holocaust that will occur assuredly just as it did 70 years ago. So you have a responsibility to do something. Rarely in our lives do we have an opportunity to change history. Now is the time to do it and it's your responsibility, all of ours. Go do it. Thank you.